Media Maker here. Um, as you may well know, YouTube is coming out with a new channel format in 2013. Uh, if you've been doing YouTube videos for any length of time, um, you know that's not unusual for them to change formats on us. Uh, this one is a little bit different in that they're trying to come up with a format that's universal to all devices, which is a great idea, but it's kind of a shock to a lot of people's systems who don't really have any experience doing graphics. Um, so I've had a half dozen people ask me to do a small tutorial on how to do basic channel art to get some text on their banner and maybe a picture or whatever background. So I'm going to do this with a program called GIMP, uh, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Uh, it comes with almost all versions of Ubuntu, if I remember correctly. That's how I discovered it. Uh, didn't really use it until this year. Uh, did graphics years ago, but haven't done that in quite a while. Uh, so it was like uh, trying to get back on the bike and ride again. Um, so what I've downloaded is version 2.8 for Windows, and I'm doing this on Windows because most people still use Windows. It's more the most common. And uh, it is free for Windows, so it won't cost you anything. And I'll try to put a, a link down at the bottom where you can go to download 2.8 for your own computer if you're running Windows. Uh, it's also free for Mac users, and it's also free for Linux users. So uh, it's usable on any of those platforms. So that's another reason I chose to do it with that. So let's go ahead and get this off here. Let's discuss the uh, channel format. The new format, like I said, is supposed to be universal for all devices, uh, so your channel art should look good on all devices. So we're all going to have banners now. Uh, used to be just the, um, the the true YouTube partners had banners, and they still do. But uh, if you convert over, you'll have a little banner area for your channel now as well. Uh, it's a little daunting, like I said, to some people that's not used to doing graphics, so I'm going to try to simplify it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> to give it some perspective, this is the area, the largest area that can be used, uh, and it will be seen by people with smart TVs for the most part. Uh, to give you some perspective, this is my computer screen resolution. This is 1280 by 720p, like on a high def uh, TV. This is full high def, 1980 by 1080p. So it's quite a large graphic. Uh, they're breaking this down and they're telling us this area here is the area that uh, most people are going to be seeing on your channel art. Uh, people with high resolution computers and whatnot are going to maybe be able to see all the way across here and see this whole area on the channel art. Uh, people with uh, desktops, modern desktops, some tablets are going to be able to see this area. Um, and this is 1536 wide by 350 pixels tall. Uh, all these through here are all 350 pixels tall, of course. And this area here, uh, they're calling the mobile device and slash safe area. And it's 1280 by 350 pixels tall. Um, the reason they call it the safe area is because this is the area that all devices are going to be able to see. So this is where you're going to put your graphics or the name of your channel or whatever you're going to, you want everyone to see is right here. The rest of it, only certain people are going to be able to see it. So you want to concentrate most of your efforts in the safe area. So <clears throat> there's one thing I keep seeing or hearing is that the avatar for your channel is going to be floating over the safe area and that you can't use this portion. You can use the rest of it, but you can't use this. That is not entirely accurate. Uh, what I've come to find out is if you have a, a fairly new computer desktop, maybe six years old or newer, um, the avatar is actually going to be out here if, you have, if you're having your browser in full screen. If you're on a smartphone or tablet, the avatar is not even over any of these areas. It's floating down below. The YouTube puts it down here. So... Uh, I'm disagreeing that for the most part you can't use this area. As a matter of fact, I use this area, the whole area, if I can. Um, as more people get newer computers, um, that shouldn't be a problem to anyone. So let me show you an exa a couple examples. Here's my channel. Here's my avatar. I've got my browser taking up my full screen. And here's the safe area in here. And I'm using almost all of it. The avatar is not over it. 
Uh, so if you've got a, an ancient computer with low resolution, uh, and like 1024 by 768 or, or lower, and a lot of people still have it, but it's going to float over it a little bit, but it's not going to be, uh, for the most part, affecting most people. Uh, the same thing with my friend Larry's channel. I did graphics for him on his channel, and his works the same way. As a matter of fact, Larry's worked with me to test the formats uh, on older computers and whatnot, and he's got an ancient computer. One of his computers is an ancient computer, and he tried it on there, and basically this is what happens. Um, but for the most part, most people aren't affected by it, so I'm just looking at it uh, from that perspective. So. I'm going to be doing the artwork based on that. Uh, if you want to be super safe, you can and worry that the avatar is going to be there. It's no problem. You can just do your artwork in this area here, and the avatar should never float over your artwork. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and be the rebel and and go ahead and uh, assume that most people are going to see the avatar out here. So getting past that, let's move on. Uh, the we're going to keep this simple. Uh, we know that we have this area to work with and that all we're going to focus our channel, most of our channel art in this area here. So let's do a little bit of text here. Uh, let's go with red. This is your foreground and background colors. This is your default color button here. Uh, and this is you can switch them back and forth. Whatever colors you've chosen to put in there, you can switch them back and forth. Let's go back and put red in and click the text tool make sure it's clicked click here type whatever text we want to put i want to put lady whoops ladybug and don't hit enter because you just drop down and have a big blank line uh, what i do is i hit the select tool and that uh, sets my text there i take the uh, layer that this is on and i move it to the top right now it's below this little template. I want to get it to the top and where I can see the true color of it and manipulate it easier. So you just select that layer, move that layer to, I'm moving it to the top. Now these other areas aren't being selected right now so nothing's really above it or below it. So I'll just show you layers a little bit. If I take GIMP here, I move it up, it's on top of my ladybug. So if I take ladybug and move it on top, it's over the GIMP. I'll turn GIMP off because we're not working with that right Okay, so let's move our text over into the avatar area. <laughs> and I'm um, go still going to go ahead and use that area. Like I said, if you are worried about it, you can put it out here somewhere. You could put it over here, and then the avatar won't float over it if that's a worry to you. Um, this looks a little bit flat uh, without the template there. That's basically what your page would look like. People that went to your channel, they would see this red lettering over a white background. And if you're on a mobile device, they might just see something this size. So let's dress this text up a little bit. And an easy way to do that is to click on Filters, Light and Shadow, and Drop Shadow. Um, Got it set for four pixels this way, four pixels this way, and a blur radius for the drop shadow of 12. Uh, I've got the opacity set to 75%, and let's see how this looks. Okay, so now we got a little bit of a drop shadow. Uh, it could be a little better looking, so I could go back and change the opacity, or I could go create a new drop shadow layer on top of it. So I click on drop shadow create another layer so that stands out a little bit better kinda like that uh, so what I'm going to do is combine the two layers I'm going to merge down the drop shadow layer with the original <clears throat> and I'm also going to go ahead and merge the ladybug text with the uh, drop shadow because if, if I don't I want to move it around as you can tell the drop shadow is still there Ladybug's there, and if I want to, I can actually move it around and decide where my drop shadow is going to be compared to the ladybug, but that's good enough for now. So I'm going to go ahead and merge that down, and what that does, it now becomes one graphic, text graphic. So that's looking a lot better than just the plain Jane text. Click on the white background so you can get a better idea. So now we got a little bit of 3D effect. Uh, let's give this area here some color. 
Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to bring in a picture and you click file open find a picture that has dimensions larger than the 2120 by 1192 white area and on Windows for some reason you have to click around a couple times to get your picture to show up it's on a separate window from your base window where you're doing your graphics okay this is a picture of a ladybug of course uh, the dimensions of the picture is 4,000 by 2664, so it's actually larger than the 2120 by 1192, which is what we need. <clears throat> I've already played with this a little bit to get the ladybug in the picture a little bit, and I'm going to have to scale this image down, and I already know from experience uh, doing this particular one that I need to scale it down 80%. So uh, this is already set for 80% scaling or a percent scaling. I'm going to go and click in here and choose 80. Since this link is set on, um, well, went ahead and did it anyway. Uh, it, it keeps the aspect ratio so the height and the width will both shrink by 80. Uh, if you didn't have this link, you could actually change your width or your height and not change the other. And But I wanted to keep the aspect ratio so I've linked it together. I'm going to go ahead and click scale. It's going to take this down to 80%. And it's still larger. Right now it's 3200 by 2131. Still larger than we can use for our background. So let's capture an area using the rectangle lasso. And we're going to go ahead and set a square out here. And we're going to do this the easy way. Come down here and set our size 2120 by 1192 I can type and that's shrunk down we can actually click out here in the middle area and you notice when I click it right in the center of this capture area is a little plus sign so that gives you an idea right where the very center is so we want to keep the square over the graphic or the picture area otherwise it's going to have this little area of the outside captured as well and it's going to look really stupid on your on your background so we want to keep it all part of the picture here so let's capture this which will give us part of the ladybug on here as well so I'm going to do edit copy and then I'm going to close this window because I don't need it close without saving I'm going to come over our main window edit paste as new layer and voila we have a ladybug uh, with our ladybug text so this portion of the ladybug is going to show up on any device uh, for the most part and so will our ladybug text. Like I said, you can move your text around anywhere you want to uh, but this is pretty much what you're going to see. Uh, smart TV, this is most likely what you're going to see. Uh, large resolution smart TV. Okay, so now that we have our graphics set up the way we want it, um, we're going to go ahead and make sure that none of our templates are visible. Uh, just our background. Um, in this case it's just going to be our clipboard background which is our ladybug picture and our drop shadow which is basically the ladybug text here and we're going to collapse all these layers into one so the quickest way to do that is select image flatten image so now we're down to one layer and now we can export our image out and we're going to call this ladybug jpeg I've already got the name set, but I'll show you how I got there. You expand this uh, file type. You're going to go down, and you're going to select JPEG. You're not going to export it yet. You're going to go ahead and recollapse this up. You'll change your name to whatever yours is up here, .jpg, and then you're going to export. And it's already there, so I'm going to replace it. Uh, when you go to do this, it's going to say 90% uh, quality. You want to move it over to 100 before you do that. Uh, you want the highest resolution possible or highest quality possible because it's going to be on high resolution devices. Um, so go ahead and hit export. And I've just saved this to my desktop. It's ready to upload to YouTube for my channel art. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me at easy at easygrowsit.com. I'll try to have the template uh, set on my website for you to download if you'd like to download the basic template and uh, hopefully that makes it easier for you and I'm hoping this video helps you out with your channel art and I thank you for watching